Hi guys, welcome back to Crossfader. Bit of a different scenario here today. We're inside the Space Nightclub in Leeds. And what we're gonna show you today is how to transition from a CDJ user to a laptop DJ. We're gonna show you how to set up, how to wire it properly, and how to look out for key wires that you don't wanna mess with that might interrupt the other DJ's performance. Let's get into it. When you're setting up and there's a DJ currently performing, always be mindful to leave them a lot of room, allow them to get on with their job whilst they're still performing without getting in their way. Sometimes you will have to cross over them, but always be mindful of the deck they're playing on and just be aware of the situation they're in before you plug in any cables that might get in their way. The main thing to remember when setting up in a nightclub is that we have another DJ next to us and a live crowd in front of us. That means we need to take our time when we're setting up it's the same procedure as what you'd be doing at home, but we need to act methodically and we need to not panic or rush anything. We need to make sure we're not getting in the way of the other DJ, but at the same time we're getting the right things connected. There's a lot of sensitive cables behind a DJ box and if you nudge the wrong one or pull the wrong cables, grab a CDJ and move it about viciously, you could damage the other DJ's performance and potentially the crowd's experience. So what we first want to do is get our sound card set up in a way that we can plug in very quickly and not cause much hassle. It's worth remembering to bring every single set of RTA cables you'll need, maximum of four, remember. You can't rely on the nightclub to have them because some of them won't even use RTAs. They'll be using digital connections for their CDJs and we can't use them. It's also worth remembering to bring two USBs or two control CDs. That's because not every set of CDJs will be linked. It is a well-known fault with CDJs when the link port breaks. So bear that in mind if you go into a new venue you haven't worked at before. Now when you're setting up in a DJ box, it's very important that you're not pulling out the wrong cables. So we're just gonna go over quickly some of the cables you need to be aware of and some of the things you need to look out for just in case you're reaching around the back a lot. Now, not every DJ box will have easy access to the back like this does. So if you are moving the CDJ, there's a few cables around the back here we need to be careful of. So this is the back of a CDJ, and what we need to be careful of here, the most important one, obviously, is a power cable. These are IEC connectors on a CDJ, they're an eight pin. They wiggle loose every so often. If so if you're picking up the CDJ and moving it about a lot, you wanna be careful that that does not come out. The second most important cable on the back of here is the link port. Now these are notorious for coming loose over time with DJs and breaking. These can be very temperamental and if the DJ that's on before you is playing through link and you go and nudge that cable and it falls out just like that because they're using a broken cable just like this one is, you're going to interrupt his performance, put him in emergency loop and end up with a really bad situation on your hands. So whenever you're moving the CDJs, you've got to be careful about the link port and the power cable. Now on the back of the DJM mixer, or any mixer, there's a few different cables that are very important to us. The main two are these two big connectors here. These are XLRs. Now these are actually locked in. You can't pull them out. So you don't need to worry about them too much. However, the power cables on mixers, again, IEC connectors, they can wobble loose very easily. So if you're picking up the mixer, trying to find which ports to plug into on the back of your mixer, you need to be careful not to wiggle about the mixer too much and pull the power cable out. As especially with the Pioneer units, they take a few seconds to turn back on. And in that time, you've got dead silence within the club. It's worth noting, however, when we're on the back of the mixer at the moment, that the line input on the back of most DJM mixers is if you're looking at it from the front of the mixer on the left hand side of the pair so on most DJM mixers whether you've got your channel your channel will come up and then you'll have your two inputs for that channel just at the top of that channel so if you're working in a dark environment you're struggling to find which port to plug into remember it's always the left hand one for the lines and the white so the left channel is always above the right hand channel on a DJM Pioneer mixer Allen and Heaths and other brands and mixers do vary with this so when you go into a new venue it might be worth asking what equipment they've got and just have a look on a picture online at the back of the mixer so you know exactly what you're dealing with. To get set up first we need to plug our sound card into the USB port on our computer. Once we've done this we need to plug in two spare RCA cables to the input side of the sound card. It's important to note that we need to plug in the whites into the whites and the reds into the reds to avoid playing backwards. 
Once we've done this, we can reach around the back of the CDJ that's currently not in use. We know the CDJ is already connected to the mixer, so by using the RCA cable from that CDJ, we don't need to go around the back of the mixer, potentially getting in the way of the other DJ. From here, we need to plug in the spare set of RCA cables that we've just plugged into the input port to the back of the CDJ. The RCA cables that we remove from the CDJ that are connected to the mixer already will then go into the output port of our sound card. Do this for the deck that's not in use and then go back to your laptop and get started playing. Once you've plugged this in, you'll notice that you have taken over the channel that the DJ was using for that deck already. Once you've started playing, you've mixed in, you can then reach around the back of the other deck and repeat the procedure of swapping the RCA cables for your own, plugging the spare set back into the output. Once all the decks are connected, you're good to go and you can enjoy your performance. An alternative way to set up in a nightclub is to use Serato Club Kit or a DVS license with Record Box Performance Mode. To do this, you won't actually need a sound card. However, you will need a compatible mixer. The majority of club standard professional mixers such as the Denon X1800 and the Pioneer Nexus range of DJM 900s do support this, but you may need to pay an additional license for the software. First of all, we need to plug the mixer to our computer using a USB-B cable. You'll notice on your computer that a pop-up shows up straight away. Now, on the older Nexus mixers, you will need to set your inputs to the corresponding inputs on the back of the mixer. What I mean by that is, if you've got a CDJ that's providing a control signal to the line input on the back of the mixer, you will need to select the line input on here, like so. Once you're done with this panel, you can close it and just launch into your software of choice. Once our software is loaded, we just need to make sure that we have DVS enabled in our settings. In Serato, it's just under expansion pack and you can enable it here. Just a side note that I forgot to mention in the club, you will need to flick the input on the mixer from line to the computer when you're ready to take over on that channel. As you can see, we're receiving a bit of a weird signal on the left-hand deck. That's because the CDJ user is still playing a normal track through there. Don't worry about that for the moment. Once we've got our time code loaded in through CD or USB on our spare deck, we can press play. Make sure that we're on relative or absolute mode. And there we go. We're playing away. We can then mix into our this deck here. So this deck is playing. It's all coming through as you'd expect. We can stop the U USB DJ. Load up the same time code. Load another track, press play, and there we go. We've got full control, no need for an external sound card, no need to be messing around with the wires at the back of the mixer. It's a lot cleaner setup, it's a lot easier, and sometimes you will find you actually get a better sound quality out of it as well. And there we have it. How to swap over from a USB DJ to a laptop DJ inside a nightclub environment. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. We hope you've taken everything we've said on board and we wish you luck when you're going out and playing in the club for the first time yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials and tips like this and we'll see you in another video. Thanks.